Okay, good morning, everybody. Sorry about that slight delay. If you would like to join us um, by standing, if you are able, please do.
snapshot of what went on earlier this week. Um, I can't tell you how exciting it was, how grateful we are for the many volunteers that we have as part of our church family that love Jesus and that want nothing more than for children and young people uh, to get to know Jesus for themselves, to trust in Him as they trust the signs and wonders that He's done and that point to Him. Why don't I pray and tell you a few more things? Let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you, you are majestic, you're amazing. Everything that you say in your word is true. Everything that you say is what we need to hear. Because of you, we can have life, abundant life, eternal life. We don't have to be afraid, we don't have to be anxious if you walk with us. We pray, please, will you help us uh, to celebrate these truths again, uh, to be encouraged by, by the power of your Spirit, even this morning. Thank you for your people. Thank you that you are the one who gives gifts and equips children, teenagers, and grown-ups to be able to serve you and to enjoy doing so. Amen. Amen. So here, I mean, the building looks a little bit different because I think you might trip over if we did it. I mean, I, I wondered whether we should do it in groups and just put you in groups and you sit on the floor, but then some of you might not get up again. So that could be very tricky, okay? And we'd pray for you. That's fine. Now, I'm going to give you a little snapshot of what we enjoyed learning about this week, okay? Now, many of our kids, unfortunately, are not here this morning because this weekend, it seems, was the last hurrah for going away on holiday or camping So many of them missed our barbecue, which happened here last Friday at 12.15 to about 2 o'clock. And so let's see if the kids who are here might remember a thing or two, and perhaps, who knows, earn a sweet, something like that, okay? So we've learned that Jesus is the greatest hero, and as we go through it, kids, you've got to help me out a little bit, okay? So let's see. My son is already standing up. Um, We had a little discussion about how, put my timer on here, otherwise I'll just waffle. We learned that there are many heroes in the world, right? Um, There are people like firemen and firewomen that help us if we're in a burning building, they can come and rescue us. And there are other kinds of heroes, right? Heroes like... Like... But we decided Jesus is better because he's actually real and these fictional heroes are not, okay? So Jesus is better. So we learned about that and we learned that in Hebrews chapter 1, because, hey, how many books does the Bible have anyway? That's right. And which book of the Bible were we in? That's exactly right. Now I'm getting a lot of energy over here, okay? Um, We can have a little bit more from there, a little bit more from from the numpties, perhaps. I don't know. But there we go. Also, our children are a little bit tired. (laughs) Even the leaders are a little bit tired. We learned that God had spoken in the past in many ways through the... That's exactly right. And that one was... Now, through Moses, we received the Ten Commandments. Unfortunately, Moses couldn't... I thank the Lord! Yes, I think... Poor Rita. Rita. <laughs> Rita's lost her hearing. Okay. Darling, can you, you, can, you can shout. Maybe not that loud, okay? It's poor Rita's recoiled, okay? It's like a gunshot. Anyway, so Moses couldn't keep them, but Jesus could, which is why he's greater. He's better than Moses. And so we learned that that's why we need to listen to Jesus. Is that right? It's fantastic. That's why when I ask you, what is God like? Exactly right. Because if you look at Jesus, everything Jesus says and does, what God is saying and doing, because Jesus is God himself. So that's pretty exciting, isn't it? And then on day two, we learned that Jesus isn't just good. He isn't just greater than others. He is the greatest. Tell me why. That's exactly right. Jesus is the greatest because he died for us. Even before little Tiago existed, even before his parents existed, even before the entire universe existed, what was Jesus doing? Holding Holding the world in in his his hand. hand. By the power of at least my son's really good. (laughs) Okay? He definitely is getting a sweet later. Okay? There we go. So, he, by the power of his word... That Hebrews 1 says he holds everything together. Jesus is so powerful. Everyone else was made, but Jesus made everyone. And we learned, again, by his own mighty word, he caused the storm to stop. He brought people back to life by his word. 
That's pretty cool, isn't it? And so he is the greatest of all because he is the greatest sacrifice. We learned that when we sin, our sin stains, spoils, and we can't be with God forever. But Jesus came so that he would take our sin on the cross if we trust him. The biggest one of all is not loving God, not worshiping him as we should because he loves us and he's made us for himself. Isn't that crazy that we don't do that? But it's absolutely fantastic that Jesus came so that we could benefit from his death. And then we decided that in order to join my team, you need, shall I demonstrate it again? I'm not sure. Yes. Should I? Should I? Should I do it? Okay, I'll have Andrew over here. So I said to the children, I said, okay, look, let's imagine this, okay? My team is the best team. And just imagine that you're going to join my team. However, in order to be able to join my team, here's what you need to do, okay? Let's see if I won't break the microphone. Yeah, I should do that, shouldn't I? I should do that. In order to join my team, I don't need a mic, you need to be able to do this, let's say, okay? So you need to be able to get another leader and squat them, and then you can do this, okay? Big so, and then I asked the children, how would that make you feel? Well, it'd make them feel sad, because not all of them can do that. And then I thought to myself, if I wanted to join, I don't know, Chloe's team, I'd have to have beautiful ginger hair, and I can't do anything about that. Isn't it so much better that to join Jesus' team, what do you need to do? Trust in Jesus! So you don't have to be particularly beautiful or handsome or muscular or anything to join. There's the best team. Look, the church, not just this church, but the church, the people that trust in Jesus, all you need to do is trust in Him. Isn't that amazing? So we then asked, you need to listen to Jesus. And not drink the Because it's really easy. What did you learn in Holiday Club? Uh, You can drift. It's really easy to drift, isn't it? And we don't want to do that. We don't want to forget the things that we've learned. So we talked about a few uh, warnings. And we do that together. Because if we do it together, that's how God made it to be. We are pointing each other and encouraging each other to look in the Bible and see what it says. And then we learned on the final day, we were reminded, that you need to trust the signs. You trust the signs. Hebrews chapter 2 says that the message of the good news about Jesus is confirmed, is shown to be true, is proven by the signs and wonders that Jesus did. So we don't need to doubt. We can bring our doubts to him. And finally, we finished with, it's your choice. And I said to the children, children, you can choose whether your parents choose to love Jesus or not. You can choose to look at the Bible and learn. You can choose to pray to him, to say thank you for his sacrifice, to say I'm sorry. It's your choice to do that. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, grown-ups, because there'll be a few minutes where I talk directly uh, to to all the teenagers and grown-ups, and I'll try and challenge you a little bit from the book of Hebrews. But just before we sing again, uh, before we sing Never Be Shaken, after which uh, Chloe's going to tell you uh, what she did with big questions throughout the week, so that's after we sing Never Be Shaken. But children, what is God like? Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus, absolutely. He is... Final messenger! I, don't, I think Rita's upset that she can hear now, darling. Can you give her a little bit? <laughs> he is God's final messenger. Do we need anyone else to come and tell us about God? No. no. We don't need anybody else. The Lord Jesus, God himself, has told us. And then, who's the greatest? Jesus! Tell me why. He died for us. Because he died for us. And we want to... And not, and we need to trust the signs, absolutely. And how do you join God's team? You in Jesus. Grown ups, do you think it's possible that throughout this week, if if it is God's will, a child had enough of the good news about Jesus to respond to? 
I mean, you should have been in here when all of the parents were in that room just listening to all of this being retold and all of the children were saying it loudly and beautifully. Let's take a moment before we sing and pray for all those children and their families because some of the families already said they're home singing that God always keeps his promises. Um, Singing, I believe, you know. So let's pray that the seed grows in their hearts. Let's pray now. Lord Jesus, this is all your work. And without you, we can do nothing of eternal value. It's all about you truly and really. And we just pray that all of those children will remember the good news about Jesus, will believe, and that you will bring them back uh, here on a Sunday morning, uh, to our Sunday school as well, and on a Friday evening to Kids Friday Club. Uh, that as the email goes out again, reminding them about Kids Friday Club, that they would be excited, their parents would remember the faces of happiness on their children and want to send them here to learn more, to be challenged, to build friendships, and finally, with the help of your spirit, to become family with us, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is all your doing Even the gifts that we have, you have given to us, and we praise you for it. You are the greatest. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand and sing and do some actions. Kids, I think you're invited to come and do some actions over here at the front, okay? Um, If you want to do that, that'd be fantastic. There might be a sweet in it for you, who knows? And then Chloe will come and speak to us. So during Holiday Club, we learnt some big questions and some pretty important questions. Um, and I gave them one question and then six facts about to do with that question, to answer that question. Uh, but we're just going to do one fact of each of the questions we went through. So the first one is, who is God? Now I wonder if anybody can fill in the blanks for me. God is three in one. The... Father. The... 
and the brilliant the father the son and the holy spirit so that was our first big question who is god the second big question is who is jesus well we learned last week that jesus is the only one who can you can shout it out go for it save us Okay, don't scare Rita. <laughs> yes, Jesus is the only one who can save us. Okay, the next big question was, what is the Bible? So we learned that the Bible is one story of God's I can't do it. Rescue, plan. rescue plan. Brilliant. And then we had one other big question, which was, oh, sorry, forgot that one. What is sin? Now we need some actions for this one. Sin is saying... Shove off God, I'm in charge, no to your ways. Great, so that was our four big questions that were really important for these children to learn. (laughs) Thank you, Chloe. Um, While you rescue Joel, could you send Nicola in? (laughs) We're kind of all multitasking this morning. We also learnt some memory verses this week, and the kids did a great job of learning. We did two just by sort of uh, repeat, and the first one was from Matthew 17, verse 5. Should I be there? Because like, nobody, uh, nobody at home can see. Um, the first one was, God said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And where's it from? Brilliant. So they had a fun time learning that. We're going to teach you days two and three. Um, I'm going to hand this to Nicola. And, and we did it like this. I better take the capo off, I don't know, I'm just singing with the angels. So we'll sing it to you. We're going to sing them a few times. And basically, join in when you catch on. Christ himself died for you, and that one death paid for your sins. He was not guilty, but he died for those who are guilty. He did this to bring you all to God. First Peter chapter 3 verse 18. Christ himself died for you, and that one death paid for your sins. He was not guilty, but he died for those who are guilty. He did this to bring you all to God. First Peter chapter 3 verse 18. And again, Christ himself died for you. And that one death paid for your sins. He was not guilty, but he died for those who are guilty. He did this to bring you all to God. First Peter chapter 3 verse 18. Good job. Okay, so that was day two, and they learnt that one to a familiar tune. And then Nick went and wrote one, and it went like this. You must choose for yourselves today. You must decide whom you will serve. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Joshua chapter 24. You must choose for yourselves today. You must decide whom you will serve. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. You must choose for yourselves today. You must decide whom you will serve. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. Wow, great job guys. Thank you for joining us on that one. Day four is one. When I put my guitar down, I'll tell you all about that. And on day four, we learnt the verse, which is actually on our freeze over there, that the lovely ladies on the design team, decoration team, um, made for us. And kids, you're going to join me for this? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. 
Brilliant job. Thank you. Um, could I have a few helpers to... Uh, you don't have to stay at the front. It's just for giving out stuff. Pens and pencils. And doesn't have to be small people. Helpers. We also... Because we learned... Oh, thank you, Tiago. You're going to do it for me. We learned... Um, young people particularly, but if anyone is young at heart, you can join in this. We are going to write on some post-it notes, and then you're going to come and stick on this lovely poster that um, was made for us. And we're going to write on the post-it notes why Jesus is the greatest, some different, different reasons that you think that Jesus is the greatest. And then we are going to use them um, and we're going to have a prayer time together. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. Hands up if you would like a bit of paper to join in. And that would be great. Um, and I will leave you to just have that thinking time for a minute. If you want to come and stick them on the front, that would be great. Is there any more post-it notes to come? Oh, uh, we can we can set we can you can send them up with somebody else to collect them. Have you got one for me? That's great. Come and stick it on. Thank you, Archie. That's great. Fantastic. Right. Oh, thank you, my big teens. They're coming to join us. <laughs> guys can you reach you can put it on here you want to put it there Lexi Come on, then, put it on there. Come on. thank you Lisa Wow well um Kai were you gonna come and help me do the prayer drill where's Kai gone I oh, was writing another reason oh this one's from Auntie Wendy Stick it right up the top. Okay, wow. Well, I'm going to read a few of these first, Kai, and then we'll do it together, okay? If there's any more, feel free to come and add them on, but I'm going to start just giving you a, a lot of what is here is saying that he died for us. So there's, like, I don't, there's a lot of kids have learned this week that Jesus is the greatest sacrifice. That's fine. Come on, love. You can stick it up there. Because he died for us. There's one here that says because he loves us. And there's a few other ones that say that as well. There's one here that says he's alive. That God is eternal. Jesus is my best friend and savior. And that is wonderful that a young person has written that. He's perfect. 
He healed lots of people. God said, this is my son whom I love. I am well pleased. Listen to him. So that's a good reason that he's the greatest. We have to listen to him. There are so many things here. So I'm going to get Kai. I'm expecting you all to join in, okay, to help us with the prayer drill. And then we will pray. And after that, we're going to sing another one of our holiday club songs, which is all about prayer. Um, It's another one that not that many will be familiar with, apart from if you've got a t-shirt on like this. Um, But we're introducing you to some holiday club-ness. Are you ready, Kai? So we do like this. Ready? Thank you, God, that you sent Jesus. Thank you that he died for us to show that he was the greatest sacrifice and that this showed your great, amazing love that never stops and never fails. We thank you that he saved us when we put our trust in him. And we thank you that he can be like a best friend so close and yet he is still Lord and King. We thank you that he is omni, is that omni, omnipresent. I'm trying to read the, the words on here. He is alive. He is eternal. He is perfect. We thank you for these so many reasons and hundreds more as to why Jesus is the greatest. And we ask that those of us who know that Jesus is the greatest will do a brilliant job of showing the world, anybody who we come in contact with, how great Jesus is, so that they too can come to know that Jesus is the greatest. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So if anybody, any of the young people, kids, want to come, we're going to sing, Father, you are king of heaven. Um, some of the lyrics might sound a bit weird to you guys, but listen, look, look at the lyrics closely, because we're going to talk about how an earthworm trying to do press-ups, and a potato trying to swim, and a mountain trying to brush its teeth. These things are all ridiculous sentences, but it's a bit like those things if we don't rely on God in prayer. Okay. Father, you are king of heaven and greater than us all. Everything is in your hands, from huge right down to small. Sometimes I forget that I can't do things on my own. Please now help me pray to you and trust in you alone. It's like an earthworm trying to do press-ups Like a potato trying to swim Like a mountain trying to brush its teeth When we don't rely on him When we pray we trust our Father That's what Jesus said So I'll stop trusting in myself And pray to God instead
do take a seat. And extra points for you if you were a grown-up also like my son doing some press-ups on the floor as an action to that song. Now, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to speak directly to, to you if you're an older teenager, if you're an adult, um, from the book of Hebrews, and to encourage you and to challenge you. So, let's pray again. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that if you've opened our eyes to your great love in salvation, in your death, resurrection, and new life, if you've done that for us, then this morning, to not trust you is as crazy and ludicrous as a mountain brush in its teeth. It just doesn't make sense not to trust you. And we pray that you would continue to encourage us and keep us with your grace, through your grace, strong enough to continue every day to trust you. And we pray the same thing for our children here. <coughs> Amen. Now, there are amazing things that we would like to know more about, but we can't unless somebody tells us, okay? Uh, the, the longer I've been married, I think, my wife and I agree, we would love for somebody, not us, to be able to explain what's going on for her to understand what's going on in my little mind, because I think most of the time she just worries, how can he not see the mess that he is baking, or whatever it might be, you know, somebody to reveal that secret, uh, but when you think about it, there are secrets about the universe that we would love someone to tell us about because we can't know. If only we could travel at the speed of light, we could find out what certain planets are like. Uh, if only we had somebody who was from, I don't know, an ancient civilization like the Mayans. They could tell us what it was like. Well, we haven't got anything about that. If only we could have someone to tell us Elon Musk's password. The secrets we would find there. Maybe someone who could reveal to us what the 96% of the unexplored ocean is like and what creatures are there. Finally, here's something that you could never find out on your own either. What God is like. You couldn't work it out. That's why, read it with me. Indeed, if we look at Jesus, so I'm going to read, listen with me. Hebrews chapter 1. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom also He made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful word. After He had provided purification for sins... He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. You know, it's impossible. Where's the clicker gone? It's disappeared. Ah, thank you. It's impossible to know what God is like without him telling us. Absolutely impossible. I mean, let me just kind of scratch the surface a little bit. Let's imagine that, like me, you like thinking about stuff, thinking hard about stuff. Let's say that you were thinking about the universe. And you're thinking about something like the cosmological argument for the existence of God. Some of you are like, whoa, give me some coffee. Yes, later. Don't worry, we'll get there. Here's what you would arrive at. Just by reason alone, if the universe had a beginning... The cause for the universe would be timeless because cosmologists believe that time came into being. He would be spaceless or it would be a spaceless cause outside of space. Immaterial because we're trying to explain where all matter comes from and so this cause must be immaterial, not made of things. Must be uncaused. Must be changeless. Must be immensely powerful. And finally, because we don't have a reason to believe that physics tells us the universe must exist, a choice must have been made, and therefore a personal being. Now, wouldn't it be sad if we had to stop there? It would be. Because there are certain things that you wouldn't know unless God had spoken to our ancestors in the Old Testament through the prophets, and then finally by His Son, you couldn't find out. 
That's why we Christians, when we read the Bible, we're excited that Jesus is the fulfillment of all of the expectations, all of the desires and hopes that we read in the Old Testament part of the Bible. It's a bit like this. In the year, I think, 2000 or 2001, uh, the greatest movie of all time was produced. Do you know what it was? The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> And we're going to talk about how Jesus basically is the movie that the Old Testament is a trailer for. Imagine here, you are watching that trailer for the first time, The Lord of the Rings. There are in that trailer breathtaking landscapes. We, we got the sweeping vistas of mountains and forests and ancient cities. We've got in that trailer crazily made up characters. You've got Gimli, son of Gloin, running around, you know, with a Scottish accent. You've got, you know, hobbits. You've got elves. You've got orcs. You've got glimpses of epic battles. That in 2000, you're thinking, how do they do that? That's amazing. I want to see that. You've got magical elements. You've got emotional depth with moments of friendship and sacrifice and, and peril. And what do you think to yourself? You think, I want to download this trailer and just stick with it. just want to watch it again and again. No, you don't think that. You think, give me the movie. I want to see the real thing. Well, throughout the Old Testament, what do you find? You find prophets like Isaiah saying, a child will be born, and through that child, a world of darkness is going to be filled with light. And then you find that Jesus comes and is the light of the world. You find that a prophet like Elijah, although he was amazing and showed God's power with fire, the Lord Jesus comes and shows God's power in his death, but not before he does miracles that are impossible for a simple, ordinary human being to do. You find prophets like Elisha, and then you find that just as Elisha raised someone from the dead, Jesus does one better. He raises a little girl from the dead, but then he raises himself from the dead. Can you see how all of these prophets are a trailer for what's to come? Now, if you don't get this, you're going to be someone who's going to echo this feeling right now. Reading the Bible, especially the Old Testament, is difficult and it's boring. Because you haven't been allowed to see, you haven't been enabled to see, that it's just the trailer. And although it's exciting as much as that was, that trailer is calling for the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the perfect one. And so we relish every Old Testament promise that he is better than every king, that he is greater than every priest and high priest because he is the sacrifice and he is the one that brings us to God, that he is a sacrifice that, unlike in the Old Testament, doesn't run out. Our sins are forgiven once and for all. Which is why it is said here that after he had provided purification for sins, in verse 3, he sat down. He sat down, excuse me. He is the one who fulfills every expectation. He is more faith than Abraham. He is more godly than David. He is more patient than Job. He is stronger than Samson. He is more powerful than Elisha. I mean, at this point, with Samuel Lockridge, you want to say, that's my king, don't you? <laughs> It's absolutely amazing. It's astounding. If you know him, you get excited that he fulfills all of the expectations in the Old Testament. And then you stop and think and you go, there are desires and longings in my heart and yours that Jesus also fulfills. Don't you find we have a longing for relationship with God? I mean, if we were back to that first illustration and we're trying to guess what God is like, you would never know what's really in his heart. How does he feel about me? How does he feel about you? You couldn't know. Unless my wife had told me some, I don't know, over 10 years ago when I said, hey, I think you're pretty. I think you're godly. I think we should get together and be in a relationship. And after I said that, it was like, uh... Until she spoke... I couldn't have known what was going on in there and in here. God did not leave us to guess. 
We yearn for relationship. In Hebrews 1.1, God spoke through Jesus. And so it makes me really sad to think that there are, you know, cosmologists and all manner of scientists in different fields that are more excited about any shred of evidence that there might be life on other planets, but ignore every piece of evidence that God, the Creator God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, wants to be in relationship with them, wants to forgive their sins instead of judging them forever. This is because believing in the God who has spoken involves things from us that because of our sin we don't want to do. So kids, remind me, why is that? Why is that? It's because sin is what? Sin is saying... And you know, that's the default of our hearts. But if we find that God has opened our eyes to see, we have a longing for relationship that finds its joy, its home in Him. Not only that, we have a longing for forgiveness, don't we? Do you have any doubt that all the kids that were here this week, I said, I said to one of the children, I said, um, Moses couldn't keep the Ten Commandments, you know, Jesus could keep them, and you can't either, can you? And one of the children said, I can. There was one day that I was perfect for my mom. I said, can I ask her? <laughs> and they said, well, actually, I mean, I wasn't actually, you know. So it's really interesting. All of those children who were here are reminding their parents every time they misbehave, every time uh, that they shout at their parents, that they say, no, I don't want to tidy my room or whatever. They are reminding their parents that we need forgiveness, that our relationships are broken. All of that points to how our relationship with God is broken. And until we get this sorted at the cross, until we put our sin on Him, we have the biggest problem to be solved. But here's what's amazing. As I think about family, and I think about growing up, and I think about the fact that both my mom and my grandma, whenever it was meal time on a Sunday, the table is there. Who is not at the table? My mom and my grandma. What are they doing? Do you have grandmothers like this? I know at least one of you do because you've told me, and she's here, but I'm not going to embarrass her. And it's like everyone is eating, and the grandma is sorting things out. Do you want any more, darling? Yeah? Just trying to stuff the kids. She is not, the job is never done. The job is not done, right? And then after everyone has eaten, and no one is at the table anymore, grandma will sit at the table and eat. Isn't that amazing? Cross-culturally, that seems to happen. In Brazil and here. Here we have a powerful and beautiful image that in the tabernacle and at the temple, the priest is offering sacrifices again and again and get the ram and get the bull and splash the blood and do all of the butchery and do all of that stuff. And here is Jesus. After he provides purification for sins at the cross, he sat down. It's finished. He really is God's final messenger. So imagine, I said to the parents, as you go on from this week, imagine having in your home children that know if they trust in Jesus, their biggest problem they will ever face won't be whether they get sick tomorrow, whether they're hospitalized, won't be whether their parents are together or apart, won't be whether they uh, live 10 years or 5 or 80 that their biggest problem, the problem of sin, of relationship with God, is sorted. Can you imagine children that live like this? Children that know that when they are weary and burdened, they come to the Lord Jesus and find rest and peace for their souls. Freedom from their guilt over things they've done. Freedom from shame over things done to them. Imagine a greater peace and joy in knowing God than anything else. That's why we listen to Jesus and we trust the signs. Now, just very briefly, uh, to think and challenge you, okay? One of the things that we said was we listen to Jesus and we don't drift because 
if you are this guy, what happens if your attention drifts? You? That's right. That's right. Okay. And this is what's so shocking, right? I, I, I apologize if this is upsetting to anybody, but it's not going to be worse than the one with the spider that I did a few weeks ago. So there we go. In Hebrews chapter 2, here is what is crazy, right? You want to listen to Jesus and not drift. Listen, we must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard. For we've heard about the Son of God and the power of His Word, His purification for sins, so that we do not drift away. For since the message was spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was the first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard Him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to His will. Just very briefly... Here's what's going on. If that guy drifts in his attention and he's not paying attention, he dies. If we don't listen to the only way to be saved, the only way to be rescued, there is no more ways to be spiritually alive, to know God's love, to live forever with Him. And the only thing that there is left is hell, being apart from God forever. We said this like this. If you're stuck in there, like Andrew, if you're stuck in that sea, like Tilly, who was part of our brilliant drama, okay, there's a helicopter, but if they say, no, I'm fine, <laughs> what will happen to them eventually? <laughs> they will die. <laughs> there is no other way to be rescued. Jesus is the helicopter. There's no other way. And so we believe and we trust in him. And lastly... When we do that, we do it together. Do this with me for a second. We did this with the kids, right? Do this. Now you can hardly hear, can't you? Those of you with hearing aids can't hear it. You know? If it was just me, couldn't hear it. If you had two fingers, now you can hear a little bit. And then three. And then four. And then five. And all of a sudden, wow, you're blown away, right? This is the difference between me thinking, oh, I heard about Jesus, but I'm just going to think about it in my own, in my bedroom. And we, we remind the kids, God has created the church so that as the church, the people that trust in Jesus, we would be able to say, hey, Daphne, he's the son of God, look, he's the son of God. The Son of God. Remember that when it's difficult, okay? Now, Tao, you've got to remember that even if Lisa's is difficult, you've got to listen to him. You've got to listen to him, okay? And then we've got to think to ourselves, now, Malcolm, listen, listen. Sometimes we struggle with doubt, and we're going to remind ourselves, Jesus has performed miracles and wonders. We can trust him. He's come back from the dead. And then sometimes you might think to yourself, I don't know, maybe Steve thinks to himself, well, I've done something so awful. I've done something so terrible. If only God had known... He wouldn't have loved me. Wait a minute. No, he's the sacrifice. He chose to die for your sin, Steve, even on that terrible day. And whether it's rubbish or whether it's a fantastic day, Dickie will know he is the greatest hero. He is the greatest hero. He's the one who is trustworthy. He's the one that we must follow. That's why I said to the children, children, you need to come to Kids Friday Club. We're going to remind you. You need to come to Sunday school. We're going to remind you. And as we bring things to a close, let's pray that this is what God is doing and we'll remind them of. And we as grown-ups now are going to respond, after I pray, with that absolutely fantastic hymn, crown him with many crowns. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, even now, the children that are on holiday, remind them, make them sing the truths of the gospel. Make them sing it and tell it to their parents. Make them be non-stop, little God-glorifying creatures that will speak to you, that will remind each other and their parents that we need to confess our sins and turn away from them so that we can know the joy of your love, which is what we're made for. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Amen. Let's stand as the music begins and sing Crown Him with Many Crowns. Please join me if you're able to stand. Now, I want to give you an opportunity, just very briefly, to, if you're, if you're confident and comfortable with the person next to you, think, is there anything that struck you this morning from, from those first four verses of Hebrews chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 2? Um, if you want to, feel free to just close your eyes and pray to God. Um, but it would be an interesting opportunity to share with the person next to you what was a good reminder of God's greatness today. Uh, take a moment to do that. Ten more seconds. I hope that the result for you, as it has been for me throughout this week, uh, no doubt it has also been for the leaders, especially as they got more and more tired throughout the week, that 
they've had to come to their God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, full of wonder, full of um, a, a, a fearful expectation that he is majestic, he is awesome, and he chooses to work through people like us. And I pray that even this morning, that's how you come to him. Uh, not just this Sunday morning, uh, but that you come to him excited to hear from his word. I love that one of the things that uh, somebody said over here is just that we can teach Hebrews to kids. I mean, that's pretty good, isn't it? I think it's good. Um, I think maybe next year the theme will be Leviticus. We'll do that. Be fantastic. So let's stand uh, and finish by worshiping God in song with Come and Stand Before Your Maker. Lord Jesus, we worship you. We thank you that we come uh, to you with only an inkling and a sampling uh, because of the help of your spirit, of your majesty, of your greatness. Thank you that on that board um, here this morning on The Greatest Hero, most of what is written is that you are the greatest because you died for us, Lord Jesus. May we not easily move away from this basic truth of the gospel, but know that you sit at the right hand of majesty that you reign and rule, that you will return, and that those of us who are safe with you now, trusting in you, will enjoy you forever as the church, the bride of Christ. 
We worship you and thank you. Help us to continue to enjoy these uh, truths and as we have coffees and teas together now. In Jesus' name, amen.